The Tishomingo Arts Council Crossroads Poetry Part Project and Reconnect for Autism is getting ready to host a special fundraiser. And joining us live all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, is the guest speaker of the dinner and poetry fundraiser, Rose Marie Dombrowski. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. How are you? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Uh, we're hot and steamy in Phoenix as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the, uh, the poetry uh, a fundraiser, dinner and poetry fundraiser that you are actually going to be a guest speaker at. Yes, well, like you said, uh, Tishomingo Arts Council worked with two other organizations, Reconnect for Autism and Crossroads Poetry Project, to bring me out for this workshop. I'm actually going to facilitate a therapeutic poetry workshop for families and friends of people with autism and people with any disability. And then following that, I will be giving a poetry reading uh, that will include a Q&A and any additional discussion about autism that that people may want to have. So I'm the mother of a 23 year old uh, with nonverbal autism and intellectual disabilities. So I consider myself a full-time caregiver. Uh, I'm a medical poet. I work in medical environments. So I love working with families uh, who care for people with various kinds of disabilities. So it's an honor to be coming out and being welcomed into the community. So now, uh, Rose Marie, when it comes to poetry and autism, what is the coalition, a correlation that you actually find between the two? Well, a lot of people with autism don't like to use a lot of words. So I think poetry is unique in that sense, given that it's you know pretty much our only written art form that deals in scarcity, <laughs> scarcity of words. So I think that certain kinds of poetry are probably easier for people with autism to con even nonverbal people with autism have been composing poetry that is made up of movement. Uh, and I would say that's where my son falls into the, uh, the spectrum. He's uh, sort of a poetic mover. And so I see a lot of lyrical movement. I hear a lot of lyrical sounds coming from my son all the time, even though he doesn't use language. So that's my personal connection. But again, that scarcity of language, you know, that maybe unwillingness or, uh, you know, feeling inhibited in some way from speaking aloud. I think, you know, giving someone with autism a very small page, a very small space on that page is a lot less intimidating than asking them to write an essay. So what is the key message that you want people to walk away uh, when you're here on Thursday uh, for this fundraiser? I don't think the most important thing is that I use poetry as the medium. I do think poetry is the best medium, but that doesn't have to be the medium for everyone. This is really just about community and connection and healing. Caregivers are overworked and underloved and underappreciated in our society at large, and they've really struggled during the pandemic. And I want caregivers to feel seen and heard. I want to give them a space where they can tell their stories, where they can commune with other people who understand maybe a little bit better what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And I want the community to be accepting, obviously, of, of everyone with any kind of difference, whether that's a neurological difference or a physical physiological difference. Um, you know, this is this is about healing, I think, as a community. All right. Thank you so much, Rosemary Dombrowski, joining us all thank the you. way from Phoenix, Arizona. She will be here in Mississippi for the first time on Thursday at the Tishomingo Arts Council. Thank you again for waking up so early for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Can't wait to get out there. <laughs>